Good morning, seventh graders. Hey, uh, at this point, let's chat about what's next on your car. So here's my car. You can see I haven't done a whole lot of work on it. Uh, I cut out the, I made the patterns. I glued them on the block. Uh, I cut out, I drilled the holes first. I cut out my side view. I glued all those pieces back on the rubber cement. I cut out my top view. I peeled them all away and now I'm ready to start forming my car. Now in your bag, uh, when you get your car cut out and it gets returned to you, you're gonna find a bag of wheels, axles, and eyelets. Don't open it, don't play with it, because uh, you will lose and break parts if you do that without a little directions first. Uh, but you'll also find a bunch of sandpaper. If you have a file at home, this is a what we call a four-in-one file. I bought this at Home Depot. Uh, and so what it is is four files all in one. There's a flat side of it, and there's a smooth and a rough, and sometimes they call this rough part a rasp. And then on the other side, it's kind of rounded, and again, there's a smooth and a rough part, sometimes called a rasp. So the first thing you got to do is before you can start sanding, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. If you don't have a file, you're going to need to start sanding, okay? And the whole idea here is to get all the saw blade marks, round everything over, uh, get all the rubber cement off. Uh, if you don't get all the rubber cement off, the paint will never stick to it, okay? And that would be a tragedy. So I'm going to take my file here. This was $7 at Home Depot. Uh, and I actually uh, ordered it online uh, and then drove by the parking lot. And they came out. Uh, I called them and they came out and threw it in the back of the truck for me. So I never even had to uh, talk or touch anybody. It worked out great. So I have my four-sided file. And what I do is I usually start with the rough side. And I'm going to come in here and just round everything off. And see how it looks like I'm just tearing up my car? It kind of looks that way at first. But what I'm trying to do is take off those hard edges and get everything rounded a little bit uh, first. Okay. And once I get them rounded, uh, then I'm going to go to my smoother file. And I kind of do this at a 45 degrees. And I know it looks like it's just going nuts here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to file this down a little bit and round things out a little bit. And then when I get it close to where I want, I'm going to flip over to the rounded, I like the rounded part, uh, smooth file. And then I'm going to come in here and smooth those out. Uh, it may not look like, wow, that did a lot of good or made it smoother, uh, but it is taking off an awful lot of material that I don't need, okay? Uh, and some of you will find you have files at home that are flat. Uh, as long as they have a handle, this is called a handleless file. But if your file comes down to a sharp spike on this end, don't use it unless you have a handle to place on it, okay? Uh, there's no greater way to end up with stitches than using a file that has a point on it that doesn't have a handle, okay? So never use a file that doesn't have a handle for it. Now, this was designed without a point on it, so you just have to hold on to it, uh, and it works really well. Um, I have, the, I've had one of these um, for years, and of course I left them all at school uh, in the building, and so I went out, like I said, I just ordered mine on um, at homedepot.com, and then drove by Evergreen and picked it up when I was up there getting cars uh, out of the box the other day. So I'm gonna file on this thing until I get the general shape I want, and the symmetric, I, I always like to look at it from this way, and see if I can get that as symmetrical as possible. And then once it is, then I'm gonna come in and start sanding this out, okay? And I can tell you, um, let me tell you from teaching middle school tech ed and pre-engineering for the last 30 years, you will think you are done sanding. You'll be like, oh, it looks good. When you get completely done and think you are finished, you're about a third of the way done, okay? This will take hours and hours and hours. Start with the roughest sandpaper that I gave you. And you're going to sand with the grain. So front to back of car uh, as you work your way around. Uh, this car should get as smooth uh, as your dining room table before you're done sanding, okay? And if it's not, there's always kids who goes, those lines won't come out. They will come out. you got to be patient. You have some time here. you got a week or two to sand on these things. So don't try to do it all at once. Don't fold your sandpaper up. Every time you fold the sandpaper, it fractures and destroys a chunk of it. So I always leave it as in big a chunk as I possibly can and get all the big areas first. Once I've done all the big areas and I can't do any more, like see those lines there? That's going to take me, I'm going to say 15 minutes to sand that chunk right there to get those lines out. Maybe more, okay? So be patient. Start with the roughest sandpaper sand like crazy, uh, and then uh, go to the next sandpaper. To give you an idea how smooth it should be, uh, go in, feel your dining room table. It literally should be that smooth. 
this wood will get as smooth as you can possibly imagine uh, before you're ready for paint. Okay, so we're going to sand this whole thing down. I'm going to sand on this uh, for the rest of the week uh, during our, our usual class time and see if I can't get this in pretty good condition uh, so I have a good example to show you. All right. Hey, good luck sanding. I know it's a ton of work. I know it's going to take several hours. Be patient. Work hard. Be good.